everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are talking to Lama Sirius Das, and we are talking about his newest book, Make Me One with Everything, which is such a beautifully written book. I just love this book. It's like drinking a nice cup of tea. It's very fulfilling. So nice job. I love this book. So welcome, Lama Sirius Das. Thank you very much, CJ. I, you got me all fired up now. I'm excited. <laughs> Good. All right, so I want to talk about the person who fired you up to write this book. Now, you talk about in your book, at the very tail end of your book, that um, in 2006 that the Dalai Lama came to speak at the University of New York at your alma mater, and, uh, and it motivated you to write this book. So I was hoping you could share with us um, what was his speech about and uh, what, what he said that was motivating to you. And if you don't remember, I actually have it because you said you were trying to recall it even in your book. But no, what, I do remember. Yeah, you do. If you can actually I tell us what he said and, and how that held you into writing his book. I do remember, CJ, because it was at my alma mater, Buffalo, SUNY of Buffalo, and I was introducing him. And, in fact, I gave a talk during the morning there to a crowd about how to listen to and meditate with the Dalai Lama. So before we went on, when we were in the non-green room, he said, and he always calls me the American Lama, Inji Lama, he said, Inji Lama, I think it's good time now to talk more, teach more, not just meditation centers, but campuses, and young people and get people in action, compassion in action and altruism service, not just meditation. Mm -hmm. And then we had a little chat about that because I'm usually leading meditation retreats as I grew up spiritually since my late teens doing meditation retreats including three year Tibetan Lama training retreats. Then. I lead meditation retreats, even this weekend, for example, a five-day retreat in the Catskills. So, and we have longer retreats also, like a month, a three months, ten days is a usual time. Mm -hmm. wow. Anyway, so that inspired me to start thinking more about being more activist, although I'd always been socially activist in refugee causes in the third world and other um, issues here at home, and encourage my, my community also in that direction. And I was thinking really about how to integrate this profound and meaningful and wisdom insight oriented introspective meditation tradition mm -hmm. into daily life and taking support of or using everything as grist for the mill of awareness, not just having to close your eyes and look inside as if you're going to find some, you know, a Buddha or enlightenment in there. Right. Because it's non-local. So, and anyway, even if we meditate every morning, as I like to do, you still have to, there's the other 23 hours to account for. Right. To live a spiritual life and contribute in, to a better, beautiful world. Now and for the future generations, a sustainable, beautiful world on our endangered planet. Mm -hmm. So, I start to think about co-meditation. I coined the word meditating together, co-meditation, mm -hmm. intermeditation. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the great Thich Nhat Hanh, Master of Vietnam's word, interbeing, and the interconnectedness and interdependence teachings of Buddha, and started to develop these co-meditations, doing it together, awakening together, inter-meditations, inter-being, ways of doing it, yes, with another person, yes, with a group, yes, not just silent, but also could be with singing, chanting, praying, mm -hmm. yes, with nature, the word is with, co-hyphen meditation, means with. With nature, with your favorite garden or mountain or tree or ocean or waterfall or candle flame. Nature. Mm -hmm. Nature do it for you. Or the wind or the sky, sky gazing, stargazing and so mm -hmm. on. With your pet, petitation I named it. To be funny, because <laughs> you know, if we, if we take ourselves seriously, life ain't much fun. Right, exactly. So I develop all these co-meditations. So this book is really about Make me one with everything, which is the punchline of a joke. We could get to that if we need to. Yeah, no, I but, love that one. I love you know, that joke. Everybody, but every, not everybody wants to or can sit quietly and meditate. So how can we meditate with our kids, mm -hmm. with our pets, 
while we're working or washing the dishes or whatever we do every day. Yeah. We're walking and so on. So that's what this book is about. Portals, entrance ways to oneness. How everything is an opportunity for this great opening and resonating and being with things. Yeah. Meditating with them, not against them, not, against them, yeah. not self and other. Resonating together, interbeing, interpenetrating, opening the heart and so on. So that's what I'm talking about. The Dalai Lama really encouraged me in this direction, not just leading meditation retreats, but bringing it to people who can do it in daily life and not just meditate, but really one thing. Yeah. Harmonizing, resonating together, befriending the world and befriending ourselves, etc. Not just meditating in the traditional sense, quietly with our eyes closed, but every moment, making every breath a moment of mindfulness, making every breath a prayer, as St. Paul once said. Mm. So one of the things that you have in your book, since we're talking about Dalai Lama, is that you actually have a, a wonderful meditation where you meditate with the, co-meditate with the Dalai Lama or your teacher. It could be if, you're, if Dalai Lama is not your guy, it could be, right. you know, Jesus, the picture of Jesus, or, you know, Pema Chodron, Lama Surya Das, whoever your teacher is meditating yes. with your teacher and so I was wondering as a way of demonstrating what co-meditation may look like could you tell us about how you may co-meditate with the Dalai Lama or your teacher or with just someone that you love it could be um, me meditating with you someone that I love you know love respect a teacher how would one go about doing that well that's a good question and um not enough people ask it. Everybody watches him in the media or goes to listen to him, but how do we really merge with him? How do we take, quote, take it in? Not just yeah. take him in. Because we want to take it in and grok it, make it part of ourselves mm -hmm. and be the better for it. I mean, yeah. that's what we believe or hope, right? Yeah. So it could be the Dalai Lama. That is a good example. But whatever your archetype, your icon, your ideal is, as you mentioned some of them, it could be. Um, so first we, and this is the instructions, and I'm not reading from the book, but it is here in the beginning of chapter three, meditating with the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. Also I have a comment here about what makes good teachers and gurus and what makes for bad ones and how yeah. to discriminate the difference. But we would first imagine or call to mind this, let's use the word being so we don't limit it to person which inspires us. And it could be an archetype, like Jesus, who's not a person anymore, although he's a personal god. Archetype, or... It could be like Isis, or... A goddess. Yeah, like goddess. Like Isis, or yeah. Tara in Buddhism. Oh, right. Yeah, an, or an icon, or an image, or the light. But it's good to do it with something that inspires you, thus the personal god like Jesus, or the spiritual master like the Dalai Lama, or you mentioned pain the great nun Pema Chudrin, who was a friend and a dear, you know, a real bodhisattva meditation master, whoever inspires you. So it could be your mate, your grandma, your grandpa, your parent, your sister, your child. But let's keep that apart right now. We're doing meditating with the master. Okay. We could also do this with a mate, a child, whoever inspires right. us. Right, right. It's, so it's a same formula regardless of, of right. whomever. So, so, so okay. call them to mind. We could say visualize them, but don't get the idea you have to paint in every detail. If you call to mind your father or mother, you probably remember them and you can see them in your mind. That's what we're talking about. It feels like they're there, whether they're alive or dead. You don't and have to worry about what the winner. And we're talking to YouTube right now, so and there are people listening on the radio. So I'm just going to look at you. I'm calling upon you. <laughs> yes. So and we're all meditating together. So, okay. And this yeah. is mutually reciprocal, which is yeah. the principle. Like, you know, the Dalai Lama would say, <laughs> I don't see you as different from me. You see me as different from you, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't see you as different from me. Right. So that's the mutuality as we take that in, that profundity, that non-separateness, that's the practice of oneing, of co-meditation. Yeah. We realize that, you know, that's within an, each of us and all of us. It's not an ego. It's a transcendent over each of us, but it's imminent. It's in, e inherent in each of us mm -hmm. and all of us. So... We're eye gazing now, you and I, and you know, if you're at home, you're meditating, you think of, imagine, call to mind, envision 
your ideal form, your spiritual superhero, your Dalai Lama, your Jesus, your greatest spiritual benefactor, your Tara, you know, yes, your Isis, your Pema Chudrin, whoever you quote like, you know, Pope Francis is coming soon, maybe if you're a Catholic, him. And just the eye gazing and the breathing together, and don't worry about the details. This is not an engineering project. Just get into the feeling of it. The mood, the bhav, we call it in Sanskrit, the whole gestalt of it. So it's like they're right there. Like if you think about your mother or your child, who's ever picture you have in your wallet, you look at that and you feel the love. That's the point. Not what are they wearing today? I don't know. That's just a thought. Right. You're with them. Okay. They're with you. So I'm looking at you and we start like just resonating together, being together, resonating, breathing together. It could be with eyes open or eyes closed, just the eye gazing and the heart to heart, mind to mind. It's kind of spiritual mouth to mouth resuscitation, if you like. Okay. I put my spiritual mouth on yours and we like breathing together. Okay. And your Buddha heart, you know, whatever you want to call it, your, mm -hmm. your Dali heart, your good heart, your Jesus comes alive more. I mean, that's okay. the idea. Okay. Like in mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. You okay. breathe for the other person, they get breathing again because they're perfectly capable of breathing. Okay. That's so why I'm going to synchronize my breathing with you. I'm trying to look at your breathing so I can synchronize my breathing with you. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that, you know, because we're not together in place. It's not that easy. Right. Also, I'm talking. Right. But just resonating together and, you know, listening to hear the voice. And if you're at home, just whoever you're visualizing, imagining, calling to mind. Just being with them and feeling like melting away your cares of the day and being with that being, that person, that archetype, that holy one. And eye gazing and heart to heart gazing. The heart is also like an organ of perception. We could use it to feel, to sense, to intuit. And so we start resonating together like two tuning forks resonating together and they start to move in unison. Of course, you could do this with your mate, your beloved. This is part of tantric yoga, couples, sexual yoga. Just resonating together and tuning in. And like feel, now I'm going to use the word Dalai Lama as our placeholder. The Dalai Lama is looking at you, and you're looking at him, and you're both together and breathing together. It doesn't work. You know, it's like dancing. You don't have to get every step or every breath perfect. You're just doing it together. Who knows who's leading or who's following? Just feeling the feeling just feeling it is healing actually it's healing the duality the feeling of separateness like oh i can't wait till he comes to my country no invoke it right now and be with that right now or you can do this with an archetype like god or jesus or goddess and be in the presence awaken in the presence breathing out these instructions please to your friends, listen, breathing out into it, your Dalai Lama, your archetype, your holy, breathing in out of it, and equalizing self and other. This is a traditional Tibetan meditation, telling like equalizing self and other by riding the breath, seeing through the illusion of separateness, awakening in the inseparability or the oneness, and just interbeing and relaxing into it, breathing into them and out of them. And just forget, not just in and out, just radiating, like pulsing wide and in, like a circle, like a sphere, pulsing out from the heart and in, and breathing, vibrating, just being together. And really feeling that closeness, that kinship, that blessing, that grace and trust, and relax into it. It's just so beautiful. And for me, if I use the picture of the visualization of my guru and the Dalai Lama, just like being with them, but I could also do it with my mother or my grandma or God or Jesus. It works. Mm. So this is like a moment of grace, a moment of oneness. A moment in the presence with a capital P. Presence of what? You fill in the blank because it's beyond words and concepts. This is how we can meditate with God. God isn't 
Buddha's favorite word, but we're talking English to whoever's listening, whatever your higher power is, inner power, your archetype, your icon, your holy one. This is a good way to quote, co-meditate with them or pray with them without asking for anything mm -hmm. in wordless, heartfelt prayer, a surrender and equalizing, equalizing self and other. Mm -hmm. I, thou, as Martin Buber called it in the Jewish scriptures, not I, it, not looking at objects, I, thou, seeing the, the sacred in each other, looking in the mirror of emptiness, O oh God, and seeing your sublime, and experiencing your sublime, big self, true self, Buddhiness, inner divinity. And then sometimes if we like to reinforce it, you know, we can put a little structure on it, but then you get into the forms and concepts, you have to use words or thoughts like, you know, oh, your holiness, bless me, bless us, heal me, heal us, help us, hold us, holify us, harmonize us, whatever your prayers and wishes may be. Not just, may I get a better job, although prayers of all kinds are possible. Oh Lord, turn towards me, be close. Hold me in your embrace. Let me be, hold thee. That kind of thing. Non-dual prayer. Mm. Oneness prayer, as Meister Eckhart might call it. Not asking for things. Mm -hmm. And really dissolving and also finding yourself in the awesome presence of the capital P, the wordless. So when I do that, I feel like I go to some transcendent place that is completely different than kind of my day in day or reality and I kind of could feel like a swirling inside kind of a kind of a kind of a rotation like I just could kind of feel this kind of kind of rotating around. and I'm not even sure what it was but it was very pleasant it was very um, I felt very light and transcendent and not my normal state of being it really felt like a different kind of state of being and my heart very open as a result of doing that. So I don't know whether it's co-meditating with you, consciousness, if you're holding the space for making that happen, or if it's the Dalai Lama, or who. Whatever you call it, by whatever name, it is a sweet. This yeah. is an ancient, wise adage. By whatever you call it or think of it, it is equally sweet. So that's called, you know, and that's on page 63 to 67 of my book, explained and with those kind of instructions. This is how you can do it. So you can call it the Dalai Lama or the blessings of God or whoever you want or that you're doing with me. Then let's pretend I'm your Lama teacher or you're my student disciple. So then, you know, we have a bond. And then if you do it with me, the teacher is like the portal beyond both of you to the divine. Ah. But like it's mutually reciprocal. You don't want to get right. stuck in the doorway. The teacher is like the doorway mm -hmm. to what's beyond mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah. And we have to understand it all and whatever energy or experiences we have, it's a beautiful thing to do. And I can see you're getting in a state, but you know, you're CJ Lou, that, that's, you know, like you're good at this. <laughs> all right, so I have a question for you. I it means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.